We're now going to devote several videos to the topic of limits. In this video, I want to share with you uh, th four images of limits, three that people in our program say help them to better understand and live with their CFS and fibro. That's the first three here, the energy envelope, the energy bank account, and the bowl of marbles. And then a fourth one that they use to explain living with CFS to other people, and that's the spoon theory down there. So I want to tell you a little bit about each of these. The first is the energy envelope. Uh, this is the idea that you can think of your life as having three elements. Uh, the first is your uh, available energy. That's the energy you, you have to get things done. Uh, the second is your expended energy. That's the energy that you actually use. And then the third element is your symptoms. And there's a, a relationship between available energy, expended er energy, and symptoms in that if you you keep your expended energy within the limits of your available energy, you can gain some control over your symptoms. On the other hand, if your expended energy is greater than your available energy, you're likely to intensify your symptoms. So this is a way of beginning to think about the relationship between your activity level as indicated by the term expended energy and your symptoms. The second image is the uh, energy bank account. And this is the idea that uh, people with CFS and FM have limited energy. Uh, our friend Dr. Lapp talks in terms of energy dollars. So the energy dollars, let me get that in regular type here, energy dollars is the energy that you have to use every day. And a healthy person might get a hundred energy dollars every day, but the average person with CFS and fibro gets about 25 energy dollars a day. So that implies that you have to be very careful about how you spend your energy dollars because you have so few of them. You, you can't uh, buy as much in terms of your activity if you have only $25. Some people find this useful as a way of coming to terms with uh, the limitations that have been imposed by CFS or fibro uh, and it helps them accept the fact that they they need to change their expectations for themselves. Another part of this that people often uh, mention is the idea of it being easy to uh, overdraw your account and get an overdraw, over, uh, draft charge and the overdraft charge in uh, CFS and FM is called post-exertional malaise or PEM and the key fact about PEM is that it's out of proportion to the overdoing. So you overdo a little and you get a big overdraft charge for it uh, in terms of the amount of time that you have to spend uh, resting. A third idea, a third image for limits is the bowl of marbles. And this is the idea that you can think to yourself, I've got a bowl of marbles and I'm going to take one marble out uh, of the bowl for each activity I do. And uh, when I'm out of marbles, uh, then uh, I, I need some rest, I need to replenish my energy. Some people in our program take this uh, literally and they have a bowl and they fill it with uh, marbles or coins or something else like that and make use of, of that by physically moving a, a marble or a coin from the bowl to somewhere else and it's a way of reminding themselves of how much energy they have left uh, before they <clears throat> begin to get into the, uh, the overdraft charge area. Let me mention a couple of things about uh, energy related to uh, the bowl of marble. All activity uses marbles. Marbles is in quotes. Just a way of saying energy. And that's physical activity. Things like uh, bathing, dressing, 
cooking, shopping, house cleaning, time on the computer, etc. Uh, mental, which is uh, activities requiring concentration, social activity, all kinds of activity uses uh, your your energy, and also. Stress and emotions take energy, <clears throat> and the the lady who in, invented the idea of the bowl of marble says, if, if you feel frustrated about how few marbles you have, guess what? That frustration is using up some more of those marbles. So that's a kind of a humorous way of getting at the idea that that everything takes energy, <clears throat> and it's good to look at what is a, a non-productive use of energy and and see if you can. Uh, uh, redirect that energy to a more productive use. So those are three <clears throat> images that people in our program use for limits. A fourth one uh, that people often use to explain limits to others is called the spoon theory and if you're interested in it uh, uh, in detail you can uh, uh, Google uh, spoon theory and I'm sure you'll find it very quickly. <clears throat> but there this was a, an idea developed by a woman named uh, Christine who has lupus and she was out at a restaurant one day with a friend and uh, was trying to exp uh, was talk trying to talk about lupus and uh, uh, wasn't sure her friend was understanding so she grabbed a bunch of spoons from the, her table and nearby tables and says let me explain what it's like to have lupus and she said uh, here here's a bunch of spoons and she pushed them over toward her friend and says okay every time you do something <clears throat> imagine your yourself getting ready to go through the day and, and start the day. Every time you do something, I'm going to take a spoon away from you. You know, you get up, you shower, you dress, you have breakfast, maybe you make your lunch, whatever, check your email. And uh, the her friend ran out of spoons, or, or with, used up half of her spoons just getting ready to uh, to go out the door and, and uh, get to work. So that's a has been for many people a powerful way to explain uh, limits to others. So. The idea is that we have limited spoons. So there you have it, four metaphors for limits and in the next couple of videos I'm going to describe two ways that you can define your limits. One to define them overall and another uh, video on defining limits in detail. <clears throat>